Hello and welcome to Perspectives on PH. I'm Steve Highsmith. PAH-TV brings you up-to-date coverage of the latest abstracts presented at the 2012 American Thoracic Society International Conference held May 18th to the 24th, 2012. We had the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Stephen Mathai from Johns Hopkins University. During ATS, Dr. Mathai presented an abstract entitled, The Minimal Important Difference in the Six-Minute Walk Test for Patients with Pulmonary Arterial Hypertension. Welcome, Dr. Mathai. Thanks, Steve. Glad to be here. Doctor, the six-minute walk test is commonly used in the evaluation of PAH. Why did you conduct this analysis? Well, as you mentioned, the six-minute walk test is commonly used as the primary outcome measure in many clinical trials of pulmonary arterial hypertension therapies. And despite the fact that regulatory agencies have approved pharmacologic agents for PAH therapy based upon small but statistically significant differences in six-minute walk distances, the minimally important difference of a six-minute walk test has not been defined. The minimally important difference for the walk test would be the smallest change or difference in an outcome measure that's perceived as beneficial and would therefore justify a change in the patient's medical management. Obviously, determining this for the six-minute walk test in pulmonary arterial hypertension would uh, provide a useful metric for assessing response to therapy. Can you go over the methods and the results of your study, doctor? We use the the data from the pulmonary arterial hypertension and response to Tadalafil, the first study. Um, and we looked at both anchor-based and distributional-based methods for determining the MID. Anchor-based methods involve the uh, correlation of change between a known uh, outcome measure, such as in this case the SF36, and specifically the physical component summary score of the SF36, and we compared that to the change in six-minute walk distance for the overall cohort. What that allows us to do is to determine a significant change based upon what is known about the PCS of the SF36, and that is that a five-unit change in that particular parameter is considered, considered clinically significant. Therefore, if we look at a five-unit change in the PCS of the SF36, we can determine what a significant change in the six-minute walk test would be associated with that particular change. We also use distributional-based analyses, which are really statistical methods that uh, depend upon the variability or, and distribution of the six-minute walk test and its uh, standard deviation. And through some mathematical uh, equations, we can get an estimate of what amount of change in six-minute walk distance is associated uh, with a significant change, meaning a change that exceeds the quote-unquote the quote -unquote noise of the measure itself. So we took both the anchor-based and distributional-based methods and triangulated them to come up with an estimate of the MID. So we looked at these particular estimates of anchor-based and distributional-based methods and came up with an, uh, an average of uh, value for MID. And when we looked at this particular value, um, we found that uh, the range in the estimates of MID for our cohort was from about 25 meters to nearly 39 meters, and our triangulation estimate was about 33 meters. Interestingly, there were no substantial differences in MID estimates between uh, the idiopathic pulmonary arterial hypertension patients and the connective tissue disease-associated pulmonary arterial hypertension patients, or between those who are already on baseline therapy uh, uh, for PAH compared to those who were treatment-naive at study baseline. What's also interesting is that the estimate for the MID for the six-minute walk test really doesn't vary substantially from other estimates of the MID for six-minute walk tests in other cardiopulmonary diseases, such as COPD, ILD, or uh, CHF. So in conclusion, the MID estimate provides a strong basis from which clinical trials of PAH-specific therapy can be interpreted and future interventional studies can be planned. It's important to note, however, that this uh, MID does not reflect uh, or is not associated with changes in survival, it's really with the changes in quality of life. And that one would expect with a change of about 33 meters in six minute walk distance, that someone's quality of life would have improved with that change. 
All right, Doctor, this was a pretty complicated methodology. Can you explain in a simple way how the minimum important difference was calculated? Yes, so comparing the change in the PCS, the physical component summary score of the SF36, to the change in six-minute walk distance um, can give us an estimate of the MID for the six-minute walk test because we already know what the MID for the SF36 PCS is. So by regressing the change in six-minute walk distance against the change in PCS for the whole study cohort, we can create a, a, a relationship and determine what the MID is based upon the MID for the PCS. The distributional-based methods are a bit complicated, and suffice it to say, they involve um, just looking at the, the uh, distribution of the uh, six-minute walk test distances and the standard deviation. And from that, you can calculate several estimates of what uh, an MID would be. But that is purely statistical methodology and not anchored to any particular uh, clinically relevant outcome. So, with a minimum important difference of around 30, how do you interpret trials that have improved six-minute walk statistically but did not see a 30-meter change in six-minute walk? That's a great question. I think what the determination of the MID from this particular study tells us is that with a 30, about a 33-meter improvement in six-minute walk distance, we can see an improvement, we would expect an improvement in quality of life. Whether that is applicable to prior studies that have been conducted would depend upon the patient cohort that was included. So I think that it's hard to uh, necessarily apply this particular metric to uh, prior studies that have been done. But provide some sort of framework to understand what change in six-minute walk distance would likely be associated with a change in quality of life. So I, I think it's an important uh, metric, an important number to have in mind with regards to changes in uh, six-minute walk distance and changes in quality of life, but whether it's uh, generalizable to prior studies that have been done remains to be determined. Doctor, have you begun to utilize an MID of 30 in clinical practice, and how does this integrate into patient management and treatment decisions? Yes, yeah, so I think it's important to, um, to consider this MID. Um, as we're seeing patients in clinic, uh, I, you know, this uh, analysis was just completed several weeks ago, so I have not yet used it um, in my practice because I really wasn't sure what the final value was going to be. Um, but I think going forward, it will become a part of my clinical evaluation, particularly with respect to um, patients who have received therapy as one of the metrics I will use to determine whether or not they're responding to that particular metric. I think it's important in patients, or excuse me, in diseases such like pulmonary arterial hypertension, which are chronic diseases without a cure, that we consider other aspects beyond functional capacity, such as quality of life, as important to the patient, and therefore may also be important for um, uh, assessment over time. Thank you, doctor, for taking the time to speak with us today. That's Dr. Stephen Mathai of Johns Hopkins University. Thank you to all of the experts who contributed to this edition of Perspectives on PH. We look forward to seeing you here at PAH-TV as we cover the latest news in pulmonary hypertension.